Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to compare an RX 7600 against an RX 76, or sorry, 6750 XT. Uh, I consider it probably arguably best bang for your buck uh, GPU, the 6750 XT or 6700 XT. Um, the 7600 is the cheapest uh, GPU that you can get from AMD for their new 7000 series. And then the 6750 XT is from last generation. It's only slightly better than the 6700 XT. I believe it's only slightly um, clocked higher uh, besides having a higher clock speed. Uh, there's not much else difference between the 6700 XT and the 6750 XT. Uh, but comparing the 7600 and onwards, uh, it's 240 bucks right now. That's the cheapest one you can get. And for the 6750 or even 6700 XT, the next cheapest is, where are you at? Right here, 299 So we're talking a $60 difference, which is about 25% more expensive. So are we going to get like 25% more uh, performance from that increase uh, cost? Um, we're going to take a look. We'll compare 1440p, 1080p, uh, ray tracing, and FSR. Uh, ray tracing across the board for both of them is kind of garbage, but uh, that's for a different video because AMD has not gotten on that game. But that not everyone is into that um, from a standard rasterized performance. Uh, both cards perform very well, and even FSR is a little iffy at that point. But um, I personally, I would go with the 6700 XT or 6750 XT just because of the additional VRAM. If you kind of like if you plan on keeping this for a while, uh, that card with the additional VRAM is just going to help you out uh, long term with the uh, with other games that are going to be higher demanding. Especially if you do want to use ray tracing, uh, ray tracing is much more demanding for VRAM than uh, non ray tracing. So the seventy six hundred does not perform that well with ray tracing on. So the specific cards that I've been testing are let's see if I can get them frame here. So I got the Asus. Uh, dual OC RX 7600 and I compare that against the that is a much bigger box gigabyte um, 6750 XT it's the gaming OC model this is more power demanding you're going to need I think it's 8 pin and a 6 pin uh, whereas and it draws like 225 or 250 watts I can't remember I think it draws up to like 250 watts Whereas this one only needs eight, one 8 pin, so uh, depending on what your power supply requirements are, that might help dictate which GPU you get. Moving on to performance, starting off with 1080p, we got a mix here. We got some newer games such as Jedi Fallen um, Order and Starfield, and we got some older games, um, like a couple years, like you know, Infinite. Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, which has just been updated. So this is the updated performance. And Forza Horizon 5. And then we've got older ones like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Far Cry 5, um, Go Free Con, Breakout, uh, things like that. So we've got a little mix there of the different types of games and how they're going to perform based on when they were released. Uh, for the most part, you can see pretty good bump in performance. Um, some of the newer games have much higher performance. Uh, Starpunk 27, get a little bit of a bump in Assassin's Creed, pretty much across the board, except for Far Cry, but we're getting in higher frame rates here, so that might be a CPU bottleneck more than anything. Uh, Halo Infinite has a little bit of a bump, and Starfield is just a dog's breakfast as it comes to performance. This was ran not too long ago, and yeah, still, still kind of hurts. And Jedi Fall Order has, it's a newer game, uh, performs much better with 7600, you're getting over 60 FPS, and uh, the 6750 XT has a considerable boost over it. So, in general, even at 1080p, the 6750 XT offers quite a bit of a boost. But as you can see, either card, you'd be happy with either way. It's just that the 6750 XT has a little bit more uh, power to it to help future proof any uh, the games that are going to come out uh, down the road. Um, as you can see with the performance on Starfield, hopefully they're not that bad. And on the 1440p, we're kind of seeing. <coughs> even more performance, uh, doing a much better job uh, over the, the 7600. Um, we're seeing much higher upticks, uh, Far Cry, 36%, um, 29%, Jedi Fallen Order. Like, you're, you can play Jedi Fallen Order at uh, 53 
uh, average FPS. It could probably get a little choppy at 37, but it's still considerably more. Um, Starfield, still garbage. Um, Forza Horizon 5, other one, you're getting pretty good. Um, yes, so on the older game side, <clears throat> the 7600 does fine with older games. 106 FPS for Far Cry 5, 97 Shadow of Tomb Raider, uh, Halo Infinite, and uh, Ghost Recon Breaking Point. Still getting really good uh, performance at 1440p, but the 6750 XT does so much better. And taking a look at FSR at uh, AP, uh, again, just kind of give me an idea of it, like, all the performance that uh, you can expect, um, no matter the settings that you're using. We're seeing a, a bit of an uptick um, with the 6750 XT over the 7600. Uh, 1080p, chances are you're probably not going to use it because. It looks like garbage anyways at 1080p using FSR, but you're already getting pretty high frame rates, but we're seeing like today following soul order. 17% uptick um, over the 7600. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is 21% and 25. Cyberpunk 2077 is 19 and 13. The only one that doesn't see a huge boost is Starfield. But that one there, you need to slide the uh, slider across for what you want the upscaling resolution to be. Uh, whereas the other one, I use quality essentially for all of these. Uh, Starfield, I would have set it at like 75. 1440p, again, we're seeing uh, an even bigger spread on the variance when we get to 1440p uh, with the C750 XT um, outperforming the 7600 by 34% in Jedi Fallen Order, and then 26% with Assassin's uh, Creed Valhalla. 12% with Cyberpunk 2077, and practically nothing, even though it's 9%, it's only 4 FPS with Starfield. And here's where things kind of hurt because all these GPUs kind of suck when it comes to ray tracing. Um, at 1080p, 6750XD is not too bad. Uh, games like Elden Ring, uh, it's capped at 60 anyways, so the FPS could be higher than that, but we're capped at uh, 60 in game. Um, so we're hitting that threshold with the one percent low hitting 58. So we're getting you can play Elden Ring with uh, ray tracing on at 1080p without any upscaling, and you're you're gonna do pretty good. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order, you could, that's playable 63 and 48, so pretty good, and it's a considerable amount over um, the 7600. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, that is going to be a painful if you play it with either the GPU. And then at 1440p, things hit a little harder. Uh, yes, Elden Ring, you can, like I said, it's capped at 60, so we're, you can play Elden Ring with ray tracing on and get considerable performance over the 7600. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077, not even going to happen. Jedi Fallen Order, you potentially could, could play it at that if you want. Um, it could be a little jittery, though. Uh, you're going to have an average or a 1% low of 34, but still. Considerable performance over the 7600. And then if you decide, and the games that I tested kind of got lower and lower as far as the options I had uh, when I started trying to find ray tracing items and then ray tracing with FSR on. So the only two games I had with ray tracing and FSR included were Cyberpunk 2077 and Jedi Fallen Order. And at 1080p, as you can see, the 6750 XT performs, again, considerably better than the 7600. And the reason why, like I said before, more VRAM. Uh, the 12 gigabytes when you're using ray tracing comes in handy quite a bit because it eats up a lot of RAM and the 7600 just, just can't handle it and you're going to end up with performance uh, hiccups because of it. So if you do want to use ray tracing, the 6750 XT is the way to go. Or probably avoid AMD and go with NVIDIA. But uh, 1080p, the 6750 XT just trounces um, the 7600 when it comes to 1080p ray tracing. And the same goes for 1440p. Uh, considerably better uh, performance. Uh, so Cyberpunk 2077 has 19%, 14%. So it's struggling here. But when you look at Jedi Fallen Order, it's leaps and bounds above Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, we have 71 and 54 FPS for an increase of 58% and 59% over the 7600.
Yeah, well, there we have it. That is the performance comparing the 7600 against the 6750 XT. Uh, like I said, I feel like the 6750 XT or 6700 XT offers the best bang for buck GPU that you can get um, with the amount of VRAM and performance that you can get. There's really nothing that compares to the price. You can go for like the 4060, 4060 Ti uh, and get a similar performance, but you're going to be paying considerably more. Uh, but if you do, if you're looking for ray tracing, uh, or if you're looking for, you know, better upscaling technologies, technology, which DLSS, in my opinion, um, is then go for the 4060 Ti. You won't be disappointed, uh, but you are paying a premium for it. If you're on a budget, um, and you're still looking for good performance, the 6750 XT has come down a lot in price and is a fantastic GPU. Anyway, if uh, you found this video helpful or informative, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.